Good morning. Happy Monday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. Coming off a strong weekend, a little bit of housekeeping. IFASU members, we have a call at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, so please join us for that. If you are not an IFASUniversity.com member, please go to IFASUniversity.com. Get yourself signed up. Join us at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. These are awesome calls. A lot of good stuff going on there. Okay, digging into today's Q&A. This is with Taya. Taya had what she thought was a very simple foundational question in regards to knee varus and valgus. Ugh, don't like to use those terms too much because they imply that the frontal plane exists and I think as we all know by now it does not. These are not these are not straight plane problems. These are orientations in rotation and so we always remember that we're, we're going to end up starting with some form of rotation. It's typically going to be femur turning inward relative to the tibia. That's how all of this is going to get initiated and then it's just progress from there. So keep that in mind as you, you go through this uh, Q&A today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how this evolves and a little bit about solution. And um, I think it's going to be helpful for a lot of people because, again, there's still a lot of confusion in regards to this knee presentation. So thank you, Taya. If you would like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com. Put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it. We will arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Monday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Taya. Hi, sir. You can call me Bill. Bill. <laughs> so formal. Well, with the, compl uh, with the complexity of the questions piling up, I'm going to take it back to simple. Um, I, like I want to ask um, about the uh, knee valgus and varus presentations. So the knee what? Valgus and varus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I know, like, I can picture and imagine what's going on in the knee. I was just, I just have hard time picturing the reasons they occur. Why do they occur? And how do they affect the foot mechanics? Lateral, medial, understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one, what do I have to do to make a uh, valgus knee? Internally rotate the fibia, uh, t uh, femur and tibia into external rotation. There you go. Problem solved. Awesome. What do I have to do to make a varus knee? Just the opposite. No. Oh. Nice try, though. <laughs> I would have to internally rotate the tibia. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. You see it? Hang on. Let mm -hmm. me get real close. Varus. You see what it did? So valgus. Mm -hmm. Watch. Varus. You just magnified the internal rotation of the femur. No. What I did is I superimposed more external rotation on the entire leg. So let me back mm -hmm. up. Varus, or I'm sorry, valgus. Got it. Mm -hmm. Valgus. Varus. Okay. So would you say that the valgus would be something that happens before the varus position? Or? I would say that you have femoral internal rotation on the tibia prior to the superimposition of more external rotation that creates the varus representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> you, we've been talking about, like, let's go back to Grace's question. Okay. <clears throat> so remember how we were talking about if you put more, more pressure around the outside of the foot, you lose more relative motion. Do, do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right. So that's somebody. So, so when you get your center of gravity pushed way, way forward, you start to move your, 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 your uh, center of gravity moves up and forward, okay? So that's moving like that up and out, okay? 
valgus turns everything down and in. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you get, when you get the really extreme valgus knee people, you ever notice that their arches are really low? Yeah. And then you get the really extreme varus people and their arches are really high. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Ivan is just tickled to death by that. So if I, if I push the center of gravity forward and it goes down and in, I'm going to get a varus, or I'm sorry, I'm going to get a valgus representation at the knee most often. Okay. If I keep pushing that forward, they have to start to ER again, right? To move their axial skeleton between their, their, their feet and it turns it back outward. So that's the difference. So the, the representation at the knee is the same. What happens is you get more ER on a varus looking knee than you do on the valgus looking knee. There's just more external rotation. So would you say that someone with the varus presentation of the knee is pushed more forward than the one with the valgus? Who's the smartest girl in the room? <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what I would say. Okay. But, but it also tells you what you need to do from a sequencing standpoint, right? So if mm -hmm. I have somebody that's pushed farther forward and they have more external rotations superimposed, I have to reduce that first then I can worry about the knee. If you go chasing the knee too soon, you might make symptomatic changes. You might get lucky, but the reality is, is that more often than not, I have to reduce that, that extra little bit of external rotation that got superimposed first, okay? Then I can go after the knee because I know what the knee orientation is probably going to be because there's only a few options available to me. The mistake, the mistake that gets identified, mm -hmm. um, especially in, um, is, is Clancy still on? Did Colin leave? Old people, older than me is old. Okay, fair enough. An older person that comes in with like a, like maybe he was a cowboy, maybe he was a Harley rider from the 60s um, that, with a really strong varus representation of their legs. You know, they put their feet together and you can, you can throw a basketball through their knees, you know? Um, you, get, you see that kind of representation and people say, oh, the tibia turned inward. It's like, it's not turned inward. It's just the weight on the inside of the knee gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Like the bigger the, the ER orientation, the more weight I have to have downward. And the only place I can do it is down through the knee. And so it bends the tibial plateau sideways because of the weight bearing. So the tibial plateau tries to stay flat relative to the, to the femur. But if I twist the legs out, I have to create the bowed structure of the leg. And now the weight bearings on the inside of the knee, not the outside of the knee. And so it bends and it looks like it's twisted inward. It's not twisted inward, it's just bent. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you understand the sequence of events to create the two representations? Yeah. Okay. I, I was you, just do you understand? Okay. Do you understand that there's no valgus or varus? Yeah, I understand. I just didn't know how to differently describe it, the right. presentations. It's it's a series of turns, right? Mm -hmm. Varus and valgus are described as imaginary frontal plane representations because people look people take a picture and they slap it on a page that's two dimensional and they go look it goes in it's like no it twists in and it twists out and if you can see the twist then you can actually help somebody if you try to mess around with some imaginary plane that doesn't exist it doesn't work